Righto, Taliota champs. Now, today I'm going to talk about the MacBook Pro 16 M1 Max. Is it better than the RTX 4090? Well, let's discuss that. And yeah, nah, I know you think I'm crazy, but hey, listen to this video and then tell me I'm wrong if you think I'm wrong after listening to this. Now, there is no doubt the RTX 4090 is, wow, bonkers. Absolutely bonkers how fast it is. And yeah, I made a video yesterday about it and I do have one on the way. So make sure you subscribe to see that. I will be comparing it to this MacBook Pro 16, especially in content creation, video editing. And you may think it's a crazy comparison, but this MacBook Pro can beat a 3090 and it looks like it can beat a 4090 in a lot of stuff. Let's first get away with the stuff. It's not going to compete with a 4090. I think for gaming, duh. Yeah, it ain't going to compete. 3D stuff, okay? With a caveat, I'll get to the caveat later because there are some things where this MacBook Pro will be better. And I'm not just talking about this MacBook Pro 16. I'm talking about the M1 Max, M1 Ultra as well. But in general, for 3D work, motion graphics and stuff like that, you would say the 4090 is going to be better. But for me, personally here, this MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Max is going to be better than a full-on desktop with an RTX 4090. You don't believe me? Well, listen, I'm actually going to make a video on why this MacBook Pro 16 is probably a laptop I'll never have to upgrade. About the only time I'll have to upgrade this laptop is if I, you know, move to 12K footage or a different video format or something like that. But if I keep my current cameras and all my gear that I have now, there's no point me upgrading this laptop even to a 4090 desktop so yesterday i made a video saying it's dead on arrival to 4090 some people lost their mind some people go yes you're right and i am right how it does not come with displayport 2.0 when amd is supposed to be coming out with displayport 2.0 with the 7000 series graphics and the fact that we're going to get a whole bunch of 4k high refresh monitors at ces that use displayport 2.0 i'm lost for words why it doesn't have displayport 2.0 but just say so you don't even care about that it was really funny that no one really addressed it yesterday. Uh, yeah, seems you get a card from NVIDIA and no one cares, right? Move on. Nothing to see here. But getting back to this MacBook Pro 16 and the M1 Max and Ultra and where they're better than the RTX 4090. I actually looked at the RTX 4090 like the Putin system. Some of the people done these benchmarks. And the reason I use this MacBook Pro and I've got a 3090 desktop that I can use for video editing is because nothing touches this MacBook Pro. Even a 3090, 4090, nothing's changed for what I do. So I use ProRes RAW. I output to HEVC 10-bit HDR and nothing can touch this laptop. For playback, this is still the king for ProRes RAW, HEVC, and H.264. Yes, it even beats a 4090 in that regard. Yes, the 4090 can render stuff faster, but not what I do. Not going from ProRes RAW to HEVC 10-bit. Nothing can touch this. And that's because of the hardware encoders, right? Now, the RTX 4090, it has AV1 decoders and encoders. So that is awesome if you use AV1. And it's got MVNC 2 that does H.264, etc. But still, even if I get a 4090 desktop, this laptop is going to be faster for what I do. And that's still going to be true for a lot of people. Now, if you use B-Raw and Red and stuff like that, well, it's going to be interesting when I get my 4090. I'm going to test that out as well. But still, currently today, this is the best video editing machine for what I use. It will still be the 4090. And I will put that to the test and show you. All right? Trust me. But that's not the only reason this is better. Now, one of the other biggest disappointments with the 4090 is the 24 gigs of RAM, and they got rid of the NV link, right? So you can't pull two graphics cards together to share the memory. This is a big problem if you're using it as a workstation card. Now, Apple, one of their keynotes showed one of these, you know, Octane 3D models, and this is the caveat where I said the 4090s will be better in 3D, except for stuff like this, right? There's never been a GPU with 64 gigs ever in a notebook, and it changes our entire workflow. For example, that 100 gigabyte Starship Enterprise, loading it all into memory, slicing through it, seeing every detail of that, it just hasn't been possible in any other piece of hardware. That 3D model they had was 32 gigabytes of video memory. If you use an Octane, you've got a 4090, you only got 24 gigs of RAM. Why are they releasing a new video card with the same amount of RAM as the last model? It is just bonkers. Why would you do that? I mean, for the price they charge, it should be 32 gigs, right? And I actually sold one of my 3090s to an actual 3D modeler. 
he actually builds planes for Flight Simulator Store, right? And he was telling me he bought the 3090 off me because he uses Substance Painter. Now, I've never used Substance Painter, but this thing is like a killer app for painting 3D objects. Adobe bought this product, right? And it's such an important tool for 3D artists, like industry standard, that Adobe actually charge you extra. It's not even included in your Creative Cloud subscription. You have to pay extra for Substance Painter. Now, the thing he was telling me, he had an RTX 30. 80 is he ran out of video memory straight away when he was painting his whatever planes he does for for flight simulator so he bought the 3090 off me and he's saying no worries it'll fill that 24 gigs of ram so these are gaming cards but they do sort of aim them at creators as well they kept on banging on about how good they were for creative workflows at the keynote right remember that yet still only 24 gigabytes of ram there's nothing special there either it's not hbm ram in fact if you feel shortchanged by you know displayport 2.0 what about only 24 gigs of ram and you know standard ram not hbm or anything like that this is a big disappointment because i actually told this guy i said you know if you get a mac you use substance painter on this macbook pro 16 here i can use up to 64 gigabytes of video memory now you haven't got even NV Link anymore, right? And if you have an M1 Ultra with 128 gigs RAM, that means you can use 128 gigs RAM video memory. And that will be needed in Substance Painter if you're, you know, painting a whole, you know, like city or something like that. He's saying he's running out of RAM with one aeroplane model, one aeroplane model, and he's running out of RAM. So this MacBook Pro 16 still for me is faster in video editing than the 4090. And again, I will put that to the test and show it to you for what i use and stuff like you know octane where you're using you know assets that are going to use over 24 gigabytes of video ram and substance painter this is still a killer laptop can actually be the desktop it is still quite amazing but yeah of course when it comes to gaming for most 3d stuff the 4090 will crush it but it does have its limitations there and it's actually you know i'm actually really disappointed it doesn't have 32 gigs ram especially for the price and yeah real world stuff the macbook pro can actually still be better so anyway thought i'd share that with you i'll catch you in the next one guys tally ho